皆さん元気ですか私もおかげさまで元気です。I'm going to talk about presentation and generation has two meanings here.、Uh, this is called、uh, 21st century presentation, this Jidai, this era,、uh, and also making a, a presentation. So、um, I think a lot of us are from Japan. Well, it's very inspiring to, to be here, aren't we? I mean, a lot, I talk to a lot of the creative people here, and they love living in Kyoto and living in Japan. Because there are just lessons everywhere in simplicity and in elegance and in great design.、Uh, traditional culture still flourishes. And of course, the special connection that, that Japan has to nature、uh, historically, and even you see the architecture, where we don't deny nature, but we think of a way to, to blend our, our houses and our, our architecture in a harmonious way with nature. And I know many of you are inspired by Japan, and even people like Steve Jobs. I、had mentioned in his biography, but even when I worked at Apple, I overheard him once in Cafe Max、uh, talk about his、uh, love and appreciation and inspiration of Japan. So it's really an amazing、uh, place to live and, and an amazing time to live here. So if you look at some of the Zen arts like Sado or Ikebana or Sumie,、uh, they're amazing, right? And they're amazing visual arts. But Japan is also home to some of the worst presentations you will ever see. No, no, don't applaud that. You... <laughs> But、uh, we're going to change that, and Ted has already had a big influence in that. So, you know, the typical presentation, and I used to be a salary man, is like this we turn off the lights, back of the room, tsugi no slide, tsugi no slide, everybody's sleeping. So it leads to this kind of thing <laughs> death by slide gementation. It has many different shapes and sizes. I think you've all been there. Watching PowerPoint or watching Prezi. You've been there, right?、Uh, listening to speeches or listening to a, a confusing lecture. From the point of view of the brain, this is really a waste of time. This is not very effective at all. So I often recommend、uh, Dr. Medina's book called Brain Rules. It's in Japanese in many languages. And it's not a book about presentations, it's a book about brain and, and work in school. And what he says, though, is that we should throw away our slide presentations because they look like this. And this leads to this. And this is not what we want to do. Now, you think I'm, I'm kidding. This is a picture I actually took. I showed this、uh, before. I won't say who or, or where, but it was a very important meeting. That's a famous politician behind the, the podium. Is he wearing pants? I don't know. You never see him. He never walked away. Lots and lots of data. And after 10 minutes, I took a picture with my iPhone, sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. And after the presentation, people said, ah, a moshiro kata. What? <laughs> You were sleeping. But it's very normal. So people ask me, why do Japanese salarymen sleep on the trains? Now we know. PowerPoint. <laughs> All day long. It's terrible. Or keynote or whatever. It doesn't matter. So we know that vision is extremely powerful, perhaps our, our most powerful sense. So we should take advantage of that. And where can we go to, to learn? How to present well. And I love this idea of、uh, onko jishin, learn from the past. So、uh, when I was in high school, back in the Meiji Jidai, <laughs> this guy's going like, yep, sounds reasonable.、Uh, I'm not that old.、Uh, but I, I studied photography and we used this. Raise your hand if you know what this is. Raise your hand, a few people. Okay, look around you, old people here. <laughs> this is called film. Now,、yeah. and this is, this is what I learned. To take pictures. And I made the, raise your hand if you've seen these before. Again, 10 people. Okay, look around, old people. <laughs> and these were called slides. And that's how I gave my first presentation back、uh, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But it was amazing. You know, it's the only thing besides sports and music, it's the only thing I remember about high school, four years. And this was an amazing experience.、It、took me a whole semester to put this amazing slideshow together with narrative, and it was an important topic, and so on. So these are slides. And in the old days, if we did a presentation about, let's say,、uh, geisha culture in Kyoto, visually it might look something like this. But if your professor did it today, it might look something like this, right? <laughs> this is not effective. And it leads to a sleepy classroom in any day of the week, any university in Japan. So, onko <laughs> jishin. There's other ways we can learn. For example, kami shibai, which I know many of you have heard of before, is very popular before World War II. TV、uh, kind of killed it, but, but the art still continues. It goes back maybe as far, at least in terms of inspiration. To the Amaki Scrolls. And this is from 1959. And we can learn from this. We can apply this to today. And I don't know why that we don't. So you have the storyteller next to his visuals. The visuals are big. Everyone in the audience can see. The audience, of course, is, is gathered close with 
eye contact. So it's a harmonious blend of the audience and the visuals and the presenter. Well, why can't we do that today? And as TED shows, and as you've seen today, we can do that. Because we're storytellers, and there's tons of uh, science and tons of evidence from the cognitive sciences that we are storytellers. We've always been storytellers. That's how we learn, and we sort of need to go back to the future and remember our roots. And if you look at Japanese cultures, uh, um, Rakugo is somewhat 300 years old or more, and it's very visual. Usually a sensu is the only prop that the, that the storyteller has, but it's extremely engaging. And there's, of course, it's all about uh, uh, telling stories and making a connection through the stories. Now, you might not believe me, but you might believe the Harvard Business Review when they say the same thing. They say, forget about PowerPoint and statistics. If you really want to make a difference and involve people at the more deeper level, you need stories. So for example, uh, you know, a lot of companies focus too much on features. Features are important, but that often isn't where the, the story lies. So if we're talking about mountain biking, it's not the thing, rather it's the experience of the thing. And here we can add context and story and meaning, and that's really what we're selling often. But if you go to your school official uh, or your boss and you say, well, I'd like to make my presentations visual stories, usually this is the reaction that you would get. <laughs> no, but not a term paper, I want to make a movie. What? <laughs> well, why? So what is presentation really all about? You know, we hear about presentation skills and they talk about eye contact or how much you should move, but really presentation is about ideas and you can present that in myriad ways. And of course, when we think about ideas, we think of TED. TED has had a great influence in Japan. These are just uh, the top 10. I actually took Steve Jobs' Stanford talk so that my friend Daniel Pink could move to number 10, but it's an amazing. These are so-called presentations, often with, with multimedia. And the, the impact in Japan has been huge. Patrick Newell and, uh, Patrick Newell and uh, Todd Porter started uh, TEDx Tokyo, which is one of the first, or perhaps the first, I should have checked backstage. And they've had an amazing influence uh, in Japan, and it's grown. And I was actually a little bit surprised to see so many amazing presenters who are Japanese. People say, oh, well, Japanese don't have that training. But I don't think this is true. At the, TED, uh, at the talent search, we saw amazing. Everyone was worthy of being on the stage. Just an amazing thing. And at my university, at the Kansai Gaidai, you can see students doing presentations. They sort of look like Steve Jobs here. They do this all on their own. I don't give them any special training other than from my uh, classes. And yet they do this, this one here, they're talking to high school students. And you know, they come out behind the, from behind the podium, front and center, connected. And what happens is, because they can do this, it helps their confidence, not just in presentation, but in all aspects of their academic life and their personal life as well. So visuals are important, whether it's photography or quantitative displays are very useful. We don't do enough of that. Visualizations such as those by Hans Rosling, uh, Hans Rosling it's hard to say, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, okay. So I highly recommend you watch those. Now we know content is king, everyone says content is king. But the problem is, a lot of people think content equals text. So when they say con there's less content on the internet, they, what they mean is there's less text. And text is important, but text isn't king. Instead, we should say the ideas are king. And you can do that in many different ways. But if you say video, a lot of people have an image of a couch potato who dreams of spending more time as a couch potato, except maybe he has a sports car. <laughs> you know this guy. But that's not what video is. Or we think of video as uh, from the internet. Oh, video on the internet. I think <laughs> That cat is Japanese. So is this prairie dog. Dramatic prairie dog and dramatic businessman. Okay. So that's video on the internet. But there's a lot of good stuff out there too. And if we look at the top 10 most viewed TED Talks, three of them use loads of video seamlessly, wonderful video behind them. All of them use some sort of visual media except um, Sir Ken Robinson, but you know Sir Ken Robinson's talk. He's very engaging, telling lots of stories. You don't have to use multimedia, of course, but if you do, it's gotta be good and it has to amplify your story and be a real ally, a harmonious ally with your story. So TED is great for videos, of course. We all, we all know that, and we all learn from those. 
But I had a sort of an epiphany. It's a kind of an epiphany, uh, something I, maybe I forgot. So I'd like to tell you a little story, if that's okay. I still have uh, four minutes and five seconds. So is it okay if I tell a little story? Is that all right? This person said no, but that's okay. <laughs> He's related. So um, it, At the end of May, uh, two years ago, I got a call from my brother, my oldest brother. I have three in the United States. And he said that uh, our mother only had a few days to live. So we had to um, get to the United States the next day, which is hard to do when you have a two-month-old girl who doesn't have a passport. So the American consulate was amazing. They got us a passport, and the next day, we're on a plane with my daughter. Actually, she rode inside the plane, and that's what she looked like. That's the actual picture. And she slept the whole way, thankfully. And we made the long trip to the west coast of the United States to a place called Seaside, Oregon. And immediately, we went to my mother's bedside. And the reason we wanted to rush to get there was we wanted our, our daughter, we have a son now, but we wanted our daughter to, to meet her grandmother and for her, the grandmother, to meet her Japanese uh, granddaughter. And so I don't know, because of the visual here, how well you can see it. You can see it a little bit, but I don't know the first time my mother smiled. Maybe she was four months or three months old, but this was the last time she smiled. And it, you can't see it because of the mask, but you can see the smile because the smile, of course, is in the eyes. And she didn't smile after that, in, in spite of my efforts at bad comedy, as you can see. Um, I couldn't get her to smile, but that was the last time she smiled, which was an amazing experience. She passed away shortly after that by my side with me holding her hand. And it's been two years now, so our daughter is older. But at least we had that connection. So afterwards, uh, after her death, I became really interested in pictures. We have thousands of pictures from her past. Uh, this is in the 90s at Hard Rock Cafe in, in Osaka. I look so 90s. And then looking at old photos um, from closer to the time before she passed, but then I found a lot of photos from a 1962 uh, July 4th celebration. And I knew that, you know, she was, everyone said she's such a beautiful person. Uh, and I knew that, but as a kid, you don't really appreciate it because I didn't know her so well when she was, before I was born. <laughs> so I love looking at these pictures. And something was kind of missing. So my brother found all these film, 8 millimeter film. Do you know what that is? Raise your hand if you know what 8 millimeter film. Two old people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's really amazing stuff, actually. And I'd never seen these. So imagine, so here's my mother on her wedding day. And, if, and I'd seen photos like this. And it, it's amazing to, to see that in color. And that's one picture. But if it's 24 pictures a second, it changes everything. And suddenly I'm, I'm trans, transplanted here. I can actually experience it. And the pictures made me feel sad when I look at them or, or a little bit happy. But the pictures didn't make me cry. And this did. And of course, photo, photography is extremely important and powerful, but, you know, this made me cry, and it made me laugh. As you can see, my father, 15 years before I was born, joking around, should he kiss dad, too? Do you do that? On the mouth? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. My father was kind of a jokester. Okay. So I realized then that this old chestnut, which I'd heard before, that death ends a life, not a relationship, is really true, and I believed that before, but when I see the film, you know, motion picture, today we call video, it's extremely powerful, so I became very curious, and I found the only 30 minutes of me on film um, before my grandmother died, and she owned the camera, so there was no more film after that. This is me on my first birthday. People would dress up. Look at my mother. What happened? People would dress up, and here you can see, this is my, my three brothers. This is uh, coming up is my... My grandmother, this is my grandmother. She looks like the Queen of England. <laughs> oh, hello. What is that? For my birthday. That's respect for a child. Anyway, just watching these, even though, you know, it's sort of in between crying and laughter. Here's my brother. Believe it or not, he's an engineer today as he's trying to wear a box on his. <laughs> the engineer. Always messing with stuff. I never had much of an engineering mind. That's me. Uh, I quickly gave it up. I really love sports, as you can see, even back when I was a toddler. And I'm not much better at sports even today, as you can see. But. So I, I heard this before. I didn't make this, this, 
this idea up, but I'd heard this someplace that motion pictures are really like an emotion generator. So I didn't, but I regret that I didn't take enough before my mother died. But many years ago, when I published my first book, I made sure that I had a dedication to my mom and dad. And I put a photo of my mother and father. And this is me showing, or my mother looking at that photo in a book for the first time. That's you, right there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> come on. There's that. Thank you so much. And she was very happy. And through the magic of film, we can pass some, what, 60 years or so. It's really an amazing emotional thing, and we, we can use it. So I call this the, the projector here is kind of an emotion machine, and it brings a lot of, you can show evidence and support and proof, but you can connect with people also to a deeper level. Now, Rich Gold, in the year 2000, around the year 2000, he said that presentations today in this millennium will be somewhere between meta PowerPoint and massive performance art. And I don't know if we're there yet, but it's really changed since the 80s and the 90s when we used to just bore people all the time. And Ted has played a huge part of that. So we call these, this style the short form presentation style. And it's extremely powerful medium. So I invite you, whether it's an Ignite event or a Pecha Kucha event or a Ted event, to embrace multimedia and to embrace storytelling as a, an effective means of communicating and connecting with your audience. So thank you very much. You've been a great audience. I'll see you at the party. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. Thank you.